part three of the Thera School Machine Shop tutorial on basic use of the CNC Prototrack. In this tutorial, we will cover one final function of the CNC Prototrack, DXF files. As you've seen in the previous two tutorials, holes and profiles can be added manually to the Prototrack as distinct individual events. But this can quickly become cumbersome if you have a piece with a large number of holes or very complicated shapes. To solve this problem, most CAD programs can create a Drawing Exchange Format, or DXF, file. DXF files contain a drawing of the part that the Prototrack can recognize. To create a DXF file, open the drawing of your part in the CAD program, in this case SOLIDWORKS. Hide any spurious dimensions and annotations, as these can cause problems with the Prototrack reading of the file. Be sure that every path you want the Prototrack to follow is represented in the drawing views. Then save it as a DXF file. Transfer the file to a thumb drive, and insert the drive into the USB slot on the Prototrack's control board. Go to the Program In Out function and select Open from the menu. Find your DXF file in the thumb drive's directory and open it. If you can't find your file, use the Tab, Data Forward, and Data Back buttons to change the Active Directory to the D drive. The Prototrack will prompt you if you want to close gaps in your drawing. This function should not be necessary in a well-made drawing, so select No. Now we need to tell the Prototrack where we want our origin to be located. The origin can be defined as either the intersection of two lines, the center of a circle, or the end of a line or arc. Select the intersection of two lines here. Using the mouse on the top of the Prototrack, select the two lines that define the origin. You can zoom in or out of the drawing with the black arrows on the top of the screen. Now we will program the two holes. Add a drill event by pressing the Drill button. Next, click on the perimeter of each of the holes. The holes will turn purple when they have been added to the Prototrack's event list. Next, we will machine the perimeter of the part. Select a Profile event. The Prototrack will prompt you if you want to chain events or not. Chaining refers to the Prototrack guessing the continuation of a profile based on limited user input. Select Yes. This will save you a great deal of clicking down the line. Select the top line of the part, followed by the fillet on its upper left corner. Because chaining is enabled, the Prototrack now has enough to guess the rest of the profile, and will fill in the rest of the toolpath automatically. Once all the features of interest have been input into the Prototrack, select End DXF. This will return you to the main menu. Now we need to specify some details, such as tool type, feed rates, and directions. Go to your tool table and add a 1 quarter inch drill bit to tool 1, and a 1 quarter inch rough mill to tool 2. Now return to the main menu, and look at the program summary by pressing the program button. Odds are that the drawing you used to make the DXF file was not made at a 1 to 1 scale. If it wasn't, you will need to specify the factor by which the Prototrack should scale the program under Scale. Be sure you've specified your scale correctly. Most of the time, when a part is manufactured incorrectly, it's because the scale wasn't specified. Next, go to the beginning of the program. Note that the first specified event is the drilling of one of the holes, as we specified when we imported the DXF. All the Prototrack needs here is the tool number, one in this case. Once the tool has been specified, press Enter to proceed to the next step. Again, this is a drill event, so the only specification required is the tool number. The next event is the milling of the profile. Here we need to specify details like tool offset, feed rate, finish cut depth, and tool number. If you need help understanding what any of these settings mean, please see the previous tutorial on profiles. Once the proper setting has been entered, proceed to the next step, the upper left fillet of the part. Since chaining was enabled during the import of the DXF file, the Prototrack recognizes that this step is part of the same profile, and will automatically import settings from the previous step. It will indicate it's done this by showing an OK symbol at the top right corner of the screen. This OK symbol means that no settings need to be specified here. Press the Page Forward button to proceed to the next step. Keep doing this until you reach the end of the program. And that's it! The program is now ready to run. As always, complete a trial run before actually engaging the tool. 
I hope you can see what a time saver DXF files can be. Parts can be sent directly from CAD software to the prototrack, and complicated shapes can be manufactured with minimum input from the user.